The Jay Young Show is a weekly podcast featuring insightful discussions with anyone from big business CEOs, celebrities, to military heroes. Each interview is a personal conversation about business, life, and anything in between. And now, your host, Jay Young. Today, we have somebody real exciting in the studio with us, Mr. Chris Ryan. Chris is a really great friend of mine, great friend of a lot of people. He's a chairs our Tiger 21 group here in Dallas and also Austin, and he just got back from a trip uh, that he'll tell us about. We're going to talk about Tiger 21. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about success. How do you measure success? And that's what we're going to talk about today because Chris deals with a lot of successful people with his Tiger 21, a lot of emotions, a lot of egos, and we're going to be talking about that today. So, Chris, thanks for coming in today. Jay, so uh, so glad to be here. Uh, and I actually, I got to tell you, man, my, my heart is warm over the fact that you and I get a chance to sit down because we've had so many great conversations with one another. And it, maybe it's at the end of a meeting, maybe it's over the telephone, whatever the case may be. But this is where we get to memorialize it and actually have an audience that will hopefully get some value out of what we talk about for the next few minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really exciting. I'd like to start with the, what's, what's a tiger when we say we're, you know, I'm in a tiger group with you, and you're you're the man. I mean, what what is a tiger? What's a tiger man so it's or a, woman? It, it's interesting. Um, as you know, I've been doing this job. This will be my seventh year, and what uh, I have absolutely found out is um, to, to the word used earlier. There are a lot of people that are successful, and success is at times transitory. People can make money. People can lose money. People can be at the top of the world. They can be at the bottom of the, the ocean. I mean, it, 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 it comes and it goes. What I find that really fits the organization that you and I are both blessed to be a part of is we strive to create significance in each other's lives. In uh, 1996, I read a book uh, written by a guy here in Dallas named Bob Buford. Uh, and as you know, he wrote a book called Halftime, which is all about the transition from success to significance that uh, professionals, uh, and specifically he was speaking to men, uh, do in their uh, you know, late 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I thought what he said was spot on, in so much as all of us can have success, uh, but often at times we don't spend the effort in looking for what really creates significance in our lives. And what I find is that if we can build significance with our Tiger members, with our families, with the communities that we're a part of, it tends to create a much more joyful, fulfilled, satiated sense of being that all of us strive for. And thankfully, with the help of a lot of you know, Tiger members and other friends and family that we have, um, I'm happy to say a lot of us tend to meet. Right, right. So what, what do you, when you say significance, and we talk about this in our group all the time. I'm just trying to bring our sure. our meetings here so people can learn from some of us. What What is significant? So you, you think about what matters most to you. Rarely is it the almighty dollar. You know, in the grand scheme of things, with where we live here in the United States now, we're all kings and queens, right? We live better than, you know, point zero 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 one percent of all humanity. We're in arguably the greatest country in the world. And we oftentimes take for granted some things that um, folks have spent eons uh, desiring and wanting. You know, we, we, we are at the top of Maslow's hierarchy, right? Mm. So the, the top is self-actualization, as you know. And so when we talk about creating significance in the lives of each other in the context of Tiger 21, it usually falls into categories that are most important to us. Yes. It's great that we have wealth. Yes, it's great that we can continue to develop wealth. But rarely is that what's most important. My experience, and by all means, you're welcome to chime in, is I find that relationships are super important. I find that health and our well-being is super important. I find that finding ways to help those that are less fortunate than us is super important. And I find in the context of what we do in our uh, Tiger 21 community that we get the best benefit and the most fulfillment and subsequently the most significance out of focusing on those things that ultimately are 
what's top of mind. Okay. Okay. So is that more of, about giving back in a charity? What What are some of the biggest charities that uh, that you support? I know you're a big charity guy. You do a lot of a lot of work for charities around. Is there is there one or two that you really do put on the top of your list? So so here's here's the great thing about uh, our organization is everybody understands the importance of giving back. So if it's uh, I know you were heavily involved with uh, Helicopters for Heroes. So if it's Helicopters for Heroes, which was founded by another Tiger Twenty One uh, member, as you know, or if Philip it's, Brooks, yep, or if it's Big Brothers Big Sisters, or the American Heart Association, or Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership, the list goes on and on, uh, because everyone understands that given the opportunity and the blessings that we have, it's important to find ways to help other folks along their journey, because you know. We're all doing this together, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, from the eyes of God, we all may be viewed as nothing but a bunch of ants on an anthill. And so how how easy is it for us to look for ways to help other folks? And in doing so, hopefully we all benefit. Right, right, right. Okay, so so now who's the guy who's the guy in Houston that trades thirty minutes a day? that I think is one of the most successful people, and we're going to talk about why. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Okay, so you're, t- you're talking, his initials are MD. MD, yeah. Right? Yeah, he doesn't mind if I use his name. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, that's all on you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he is extremely successful because he not only laughs every time you see him, he's always you know jovial, but he also works 30 minutes a day, maybe. If that. Uh, and makes millions of dollars a year because he has this, vehicle that has allowed him to do this and he raises four kids but he also gives back a tremendous amount so so you just talked about his success but you're bleeding into his significance so let's talk about his significance for a while so uh he is a super dad because i've seen him in action with his kids Mm. and that guy his children hang the moon for him i mean he walks talks lives and breathes for those four uh kids He's also, as you know, heavily involved in human rights issues as it relates to North Korea. That's his big press. So he's always looking for ways to try to help, educate, inform, uh, raise money for. He's, he's done a number of fundraisers that you and I have been part of around that. So he finds significance. And if, if you were to ask him what he's most proud of, I promise you his role as a father and the work that he's doing with North Korea from a philanthropic standpoint would both land head and shoulders above the amount of dollars in his bank account. Right, right, exactly. So one of the things that you pride yourself on is giving back and giving money. And you gave us all a $2 bill last 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 month, and you said— Yes, I did. Mate, I got it right here. I'll, I'll show you. I've got it. And uh, it's right here, my $2 bill. That Chris Chris gave us, and he said, "Make sure you give back." And this is not a setup setup for the studio or the show, Kim. This this is um, just something that Chris has talked about. He said, "Hey, we want you to give this two dollar bill to somebody." What are some of the good stories that you've heard coming back? All right, so let's let's set this up. So last September, uh, in the context of uh, one of our uh, visits, we talked about the importance of acts of random kindness. And how I believe, and I I think it's been proven out, that for somebody to do something uh, selflessly, um, at times anonymously, uh, to benefit another is a gift to both parties. Both the giver and the receiver benefit from that. And so uh, we watched a few videos, we talked about it, and we decided that in uh, our September meeting, we announced it, in October meeting, everyone would come back with their stories. And the stories were off the chart. Um, I can think of one person who you and I both know. He decided that he was going to buy all the coffee at a uh, local coffee shop for an hour and wound up making a new friend out of it, right? Mm. And he's all excited about that. Um, <laughs> we had other folks that uh, uh, one of, uh, another one of our friends is in the habit of giving uh, the custodian at the airport bathrooms uh, like a $10 or a $5 bill just because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know honestly I was digging around for my two dollar bill but I just gave it out 
because uh, I usually carry about three or four of them. I gave one to a gentleman that I saw uh, cleaning up garbage at the meeting I was right before this. Mm. Uh, and what's interesting is you convey so much positive joy in something as simple as giving somebody else a silly $2 bill. Right. Right? So, you know, I, I was uh, just in Park City skiing, and there was a guy who was, I was waiting for my skis, and guy who was cleaning up. I came up to him, took a picture with him, gave him a $2 bill, and, and made his day. Wow. And so wow. it's, it's life is best experienced not when you focus all the time on just the one or two big things that define it, but oftentimes you get a lot of joy and sustainable uh, happiness off of focusing on the little things. And right, right. Two dollars, no yeah, big deal. That's not, no big deal. I, I think my, my story coming back was I was in an airport. There was 10 military people in line. I remember at, this story. It's a great story. Yeah, so there's like 10 people in line, at, at military guys in line and women. And I went by and I gave. I, I tried to figure out, okay, so now I want to buy all those people lunch. And how do I do this? Well, okay, do I sit back and go, okay, so you have this, here's yours, or what? So I ended up giving the guy a hundred dollar bill at the end of the yep. line. I said, "Hey, here's here's a hundred dollar bill. Buy everybody lunch. It's all on him. It's all on him, everybody." And then I gave him a hundred bucks, and I said, "Okay, so don't worry about giving me any change. Just just because I was like, I don't know if it's going to cost sixty, seventy, eighty, whatever it is. Just hey, share it with everybody. And and uh, man, thank you so much for your service. I mean, man, these guys give it up. I mean, for our country, which is the reason why you're saying that it's one of the best." countries ever. Yeah. You know, one of the things that you think about is all of us are on a journey, right? And nobody knows what trials, tribulations, and troubles the person next to you is going through. Next to you in a, in a Starbucks line, getting coffee next to you at a restaurant. And so what I find is these, you know, be it the random act of kindness or just finding ways to be kind to people tends to be a way that you can give kind of into the ether of life, and who knows how that comes back to you. And also, who knows how that can affect people. So saying good morning to somebody who you pass in a hallway going to work, or you know, letting, letting the guy who's desperately trying to cut in front of you in a car line, cut in front of you in a car line, I find that I am a happier person and I am a calmer person by just finding kindness wherever I can make it happen. Right. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. Thanks thanks for that. I appreciate you bringing that into the into our meetings. You know, because well, wait a minute. You haven't mentioned money about money with people. I mean, that's what this thing's all about. Don't you have to have a certain net worth and you have to have So again, you, there's you, people with hundreds of millions of dollars sure in are. your in your in your group. But I th- I think what and you and Jay, I know you well enough to know you would agree with this. I think what uh what allows us to be as open and as vulnerable, as transparent and as authentic as we can, isn't the size of our wallets. Because as you and I both know, there are um, folks within uh, our community that are phenomenally rich, uh, rich beyond all measure. And so if the measuring stick for how successful or significant a person you are is the size of their wallet, I think you really missed the mark. I think what connects us, and you think about, you know, there's a there's a gentleman in uh, our organization who prides himself on the fact that on weekends when he's walking with his wife, he's picking up trash, mm-hmm. right? And and you know right, how much right. joy he gets out of that oh, yeah. silly oh, yeah. stuff. What connects us is really kind of a character, value, moral, and ethical set, because when you're trying to create, this isn't a this isn't an investment club. This is. Uh, it's not even a tribe, even though I use that term. It's more of a family. And when you look across what defines um, family, the, one of the first things is the level of care and interaction you have with one another. Right. I would suggest to you that we care a lot about each other. And it's care that transcends business. It's care that transcends situation. It's care because we all know each other and we all line up across some characteristics that are pretty universal. So as an example, within our uh, organization, everybody's a giver, right? You know, you, in, the, in the world of life, you have givers, you have receivers, and you have takers, right? No one really likes to hang out with takers for a particularly long time because they, they tend to, to suck the energy out of the room. Um, receivers are somewhere in the middle. I think sometimes we do a good job at that. I think sometimes we don't. 
I think everybody's a giver. So that's one of the characteristics that define us. I think we're all insatiably curious. Everybody is a life learner. You know, in their 30s, in their 40s, you know, one of the uh, older gentlemen in our group, as you know, is rolling up on 80. And, and that guy is as hungry and thirsty to learn today as he was probably when he was 15 years old. Right. And so that is another characteristic that define us. Um, we all tend to play well with each other, meaning we all have a tendency, regardless of, of where we come from and how we show up, everybody knows how to put their ego aside. Mm. And so we roll into our environment humble, open, receptive, caring, and authentic. And when you can get a group of folks together like that all under you know, one roof, and you can start talking about what is truly most significant. You know, so we do talk about investment opportunities, as you know, and some of these investment opportunities have done phenomenally well. Some of them, not so much. I mean, that's life. But regardless of whether the investment opportunities are working or not working, what it seems to me we typically gravitate towards and hold on to is this authenticity and this transparency and this vulnerability that comes from us sharing stuff that often has very little to do with dollars and cents. Right, right. Okay. So, but it is about freedom. I know Greg Alexander mentioned this term last month. We do a, pub, a portfolio defense where we talk about our portfolios just to make sure that people have their money in the right place and that they're, they're they have longevity for legacies. I mean, not only for this lifetime, but for many, many lifetimes. And that's one of the things that we go over a lot and talk about legacy and what are you giving back to your kids financially because it's quantifiable, but also the quality of life. And one of the one of the terms that we throw around a lot is freedom because that's what life's all about. It's it's about who you want, what, what you want to do with who you want to do it with. Yep. You know, and so freedom is a great term in, in my eyes because I like to do whatever I want to do with whoever I want to do it with. Sure. You know, sure. I love hanging out with Chris Ryan. You know, Marvin Blum, Greg Alexander. You know, I'm drinking my, my earth water right now, CJ, so you got to know that with Kim here. So, uh-huh. you know, this will make me this will make me live longer. I can live longer if I drink two of these a day. Mm-hmm. And it's about life, and it's about longevity, and it's about just being, you know, being happy. You know, happiness is a, is a big term we it's, throw it's, around. Uh, Again, I, I default to the, the words I used earlier. It's about finding significance. It's about being purposeful. Uh, it's about bettering the community and the world around you. And as we, we sometimes do and sometimes don't do, it's about the ability that we have to put our head down at night and feel like we've done something to move the needle of life forward and better some element or some space in our worlds in a way that we can be thankful, grateful, uh, and happy about. Right, right. When I first became involved in Tiger 21 in 2010, no, I, I met your predecessor, Bill Case, yeah. 2010. I couldn't get in for a year. I mean, he kept going, well, we're full with this group, and it's hard to get in because it's not just – you can't just walk in and go, hey, Chris, I want to be a member. It, it's tough to become a member. You know, and so Bill did that on me, and, and I was very – I was vetted, obviously. And – when I, when I finally got in, I was like, oh, great. So how can people get in? I mean, is there a, is there a Chris Ryan website or, or a, a Tiger 21 website? How can people get a hold of you? So um, anyone is welcome to hit the uh, corporate website, which is www.tiger21.com. Um, my responsibility, as you know, is both Dallas and Houston. So folks that are geographically here in central Texas, I'm more than happy to visit with. They can connect with me through um, uh, the website, uh, and I'm happy to talk to anyone who's interested in Tiger 21. As you know, we have a pretty strenuous uh, vetting process, uh, and in addition to having a um, level of investable funds, as I mentioned earlier, we're really focused on making sure there is a cultural, there's a tonality fit between the individuals that um, we look to join Tiger 21 and the family that we've created. Gotcha, gotcha. This is a club that that when Michael Sonnefeld started Tiger Twenty One in the year nineteen ninety nine, I yep. think it was incorporated yep. in then two thousand. You know, they had they just had a few members. I mean, it was like he started because he had some success building a big real estate empire in in New York, and he sold it. He was in a CEO group at the time, and he said, "You know what?" He goes. Um, 
I don't have any more problems. So I'm going to go back to the CEO group and ask them questions about that. I've got all this money, and I need to figure out where do I invest it. How do I how do I better the quality of my life? And that's what Michael and Tiger's all about. You it know, was a really I give him a lot of credit for what he saw as a real um, need amongst uh, folks that had come from um, modest or, or reasonable means and then had really uh, exceeded all expectations. As you know, most of the Tiger 21 members never thought when they were uh, first starting out that they would be in this space. And so for all intents and purposes, they're more or less like immigrants to this land of wealth. Mm -hmm. And as you know, with wealth comes a lot of responsibility. You also wind up having a huge target on your back at all point in time. Mm -hmm. So you wonder about the integrity or the agenda or the um, um, how you, you meet somebody new and do they want to be your friend or are they trying to sell you something? Mm. Do, uh, uh, do they, right, do they right. want to give you um, uh, unsolicited advice because they care about you and they want to see you succeed? Or is there an angle that they're working? You know, the, the beauty of what Michael Sonnefeld created is he created a safe haven that all of us could go to to learn about wealth and about the challenges with wealth that we never had the opportunity or the need to learn when, you know, for, for myself, you know, I, uh, my first uh, business success happened when I was relatively young, and I was totally content eating bubbly pizza and Top Raymond because we would work 18 hours, we'd sleep for about four, shower because we had to, and then get back to work. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not atypical. That's actually pretty typical of how all of us came up in this. Right, right, right. Okay, all right. So if somebody wanted to be a member, they would go through a vetting process with you. And you're in Austin too, right? I am. You have one group or two? I have three groups here in Dallas, as you know. Three in Dallas. And I have one uh, fantastic group down in Austin. Yeah, it's a good group down there. I really do like them a lot. Are you starting a second group in Austin, or is that just on the brink? Or? You know, I, I would I would love to continue growing both in Dallas and Austin, and we'll see how that pans out this year. Yeah, okay. All right, good. So what are some of your goals for – what are some of your five-year goals? I mean, five-year goals or 10-year goals? Business, personal? Yeah, that's a big question. So uh, let's break it down into a few pieces. Um, uh, as you know, I have a 17-year-old uh, daughter that is absolutely the center of my universe. Uh, you know, want to get her off to college, uh, want to get her through college and, and off in life. So that's probably top of mind 24-7 for me. Hello, Bishop. How you doing, Bishop? Let's do a shout out to Bishop. Great. So, uh, great kid. Uh, so that's one thought. Uh, second thought is, you know, professionally, uh, you know, you and I have done a lot of different things over the course of our lives. Uh, I view what I do with Tiger 21 not as a job or not as a profession, but really more of a vocation, more of a calling. I really enjoy what I do. And, and you know, you've, you and I have talked about this on multiple occasions. This, this transcends investment club. This transcends, you know, peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning group. This has really become a, a family or a community of folks. And so, you know, I'm having uh, breakfast at 7 a.m. with uh, one of our speakers for tomorrow. I have the privilege of sitting down and visiting with you here today. And this afternoon, I'm going to be with another two of them. Uh, and I find that for me, in terms of getting back to where we started this conversation, in terms of um, significance, this is where I find my greatest significance in terms of what I do on a day-in, day-out professional basis. Right. Well, and I'll tell you what, one of the reasons why Tiger has grown so rapidly is because of Chris Ryan. You're setting the bar extremely high for other chairs. I mean, there's probably 50 chairs, 40 chairs? Yeah, uh, somewhere between 40 and 50 would be 40 and 50 chairs, yeah. I mean, this group, when I when I joined, there was 150 people or something in it, and our annual conference was, you know, I mean, it was pretty small. You know, first couple of annual conferences were pretty small. Great. They brought great speakers, so forth. But since then, it's grown to 700, 750 people so yeah. far. It's all over the world. Me and you went to Hong Kong. We did. I did my portfolio defense in Hong Kong. You did. It was awesome. I thought there's going to be all these little short guys with cigarettes, you know, just kind of going back and forth. But no, it was it was a lot. I mean, the the talent over there is incredible. Really, really neat. You know, it's it's interesting because clearly there is a universal need for this kind of an organization. 
And again, I, I think Michael Sonnenfeld had a real vision in what he was creating with Tiger 21 that's picking up tremendous momentum. So we're all across the United States. We're across Canada. We're in Zurich. We're in London. You and I uh, have gone to Hong Kong. I suspect they'll open up three or four uh, new international locations. They're typically opening opening up the same amount here domestically. So the 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 market needs a Tiger 21, and uh, we're grateful to have such a uh, phenomenal organization that's willing to answer that call. Right. Well, I tell you, it's grown a lot because of Chris. Because Chris has a his uh, Texas weekend. What do you, you call that? What it's in May. The the Texas joint meeting. Yes. The Texas joint meeting. Yeah. And te- and, and Chris will invite more people there and we'll have people from all over the country at this event that chris is putting on and there is an enormous amount of of tiger members that come in and it's bigger than the first annual conferences that i went to and just it's all because of chris and and chris is just a great networker he works his buns off for this he doesn't know he works hard because it's just that's just chris ryan he's full throttle and does a great job in putting people together and and putting these groups together and and he's one of the very top, top. You and Charlie Garcia out of Florida go back and forth, and Charlie says you're the best, and you say Charlie's the best, which is which is very humbling for both of you because y'all both do a great job. But but to grow this organization like that, and and the vision for you as well. I mean to to do this. Well, you you think about so again getting back to our comment around significance. What fulfills me most? Um, I like to see other people grow. I like to see them better themselves. You know, you think about anyone in uh, our group five years ago versus today. You know, people have moved emotionally. They've moved relationally. They've moved spiritually. They've moved financially. But we're all moving, and mm-hmm. we're evolving, and we're growing. I mean, not not to put you on the spot, Jay, but you know, you think about where you were five years ago, mm-hmm. and you're in a very different spot than where you are today. And I'm not just talking about the oil and gas space. I'm talking about your relationships. I'm talking about your friendships. I mean, you've done a lot of growing that has nothing to do with dollars and cents, Mm -hmm. but has everything to do with your quality of life, with your sense of fulfillment, with the um, celebrating the people that are most important to you, who you love, and they love you. I mean, you know, not to say it's a kinder and nicer uh, version 2.0, Jay Young, but I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> well, hey, that's great to know. So, Michelle, did you hear that? I'm just wondering if Michelle heard that or not. I don't know. But uh, but thanks, thanks, Chris, for that. And I have grown a lot because, you know, one of the things that, the, that they want in the group is for you to be open and for you to listen to other people. You know, they give you books to read. We, we go over books all the time to learn more about ourselves and what it takes to be the best person and to, you know, for, for not only you, but if you take care of yourself, you'll take care of other people. And I think that's one of the things that we've grown in, as, as an organization. I've grown as a person because of, because of you, Chris. So, man, you're, Thank you're you. awesome. That's, that's kind of you to say. So I, I think if there's one big takeaway, right, from, from the entire conversation we've had around this you know, wonderful organization called Tiger 21, is that Tiger 21 helps you figure out what's most important to your growth and then creates an environment that allows that to happen. And that sounds simple, it sounds pretty straightforward, that is super hard to accomplish. So when it does happen, and when we do have that growth individually, and I'm speaking as much for myself as anyone else in the organization, it's something that we all can collectively celebrate together. Right, right, and I I wanted you to be on the first show. I mean, that's why I wanted you to come in on one of the first shows because because people out there are going to want to know who's Jay Young, right? This Jay Young show gig, what, what what's this all about? And I wanted people to know this is a big part of who I am is because of Chris. You know, Chris just leading the pack. the The vehicle is the Tiger the Tiger Pack tribe, as you as you call all of us. Is there's forty or fifty members that you have, and you know just all the different things that that you've helped me accomplish. So, Chris, I appreciate that. And and so, but you asked a really good question. And there are a lot of ways to answer it. So I'd like permission to take a stab. What so, question was so that? The, I forgot. The question <laughs> is, who is Jay Young? Right? <laughs> okay. So when, when I see you, I see you first and foremost as a phenomenal family guy. You are a great husband to your wife, Michelle. You are a great father to not only the daughter at home, but also the daughters that may be a little estranged from you. You're a fantastic friend. 
you're incredibly generous. You are um, super curious. You always want to learn. You always want to grow. You're open and you're available for constructive feedback. I mean, you're a fantastic oil guy. Yep. But that is actually a very small part of the, of the gift that is you to the people that know you. And so for myself, for the, for the, the rest of the Tiger 21 tribe, we're honored to have you as part of our family because you're an important part of our family, not because of how financially successful you are. You've been wonderfully financially successful. And that, that's great and wonderful. But it's all of these other things that really are the example by which other Tiger 21 members and myself can learn from. Well, I appreciate that. I, and I, I do my best because, man, you know, if I can ask you questions and you can help me, I can help you. I can help other people. You know, and that's what it's all about. It's not about sure it's it not about us. It's about giving back and learning and and helping other people. You know, in, in our group. So, in the portfolio defense, it's something that that you you do. And and one of the reasons why I want to get into Tiger, you lay out your finances, right? You lay out how much cash you have, how much your business is worth, blah blah blah, and all these different. And I'll never forget one of our members was a little older, and he had never showed anybody his sure. finances before. I don't think he ever showed his wife. But came on and said that and came up and he like he got up in front of the room and it was like his pants were down, right? I mean <laughs> it, it was very uncomfortable for him. Sure but was. he learned a lot. He learned a lot about that. And and he learned from that and I learned from that as well. You know, and asking people about advice and I've done some really bad investments. Oh my gosh, man I wish I'd have learned more about those investments, and I know I would have if I'd have been in Tiger at that time. I would have had more financial freedom at this point in my life if I would have done some 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 of those. But that's those are things that we can go back to and and ask. Hey, so so group, I'm looking at this investment. What do you think about it? You sure. know, anybody had any experience in this? And and you know, what about the operator? You know that you know we operate our own wells with King Operating, and we do everything in house and. And which is a good thing. You want people to know that and how he does an operator. And is it a good financial vehicle for you? And the same thing about investments. So we ask that. And I know you vet a lot of the investment ideas that come in, you know, because you just don't want somebody to come in that's, that's you know, some guy that off the street and it's going to take your money and just run. So you vet them a lot. So that's a great investment opportunity. So this Tiger 21 deal is just really, really strong. Really strong, and and I tell you, Chris, you've done it. Ex- you're the best chair in my eyes. Sorry, Charlie, if you're listening, that we could have because you not only have helped us me grow as a person, but you've also helped a lot of other people grow. And you keep bringing people in, and your your Rolodex is full of a lot of people that come in, that sit down with us, that that are open minded, that can listen and learn, and that want to better themselves. Yep. That's the hope, right? That's the dream, and and thankfully, it's 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 a growing reality. So we're looking to find like-minded people, men and women, uh, who believe and um, have the same character set that we do, because collectively, we we can change the world. I mean, you think about uh, you know we we talked in January about how much money philanthropically we raised in all of 2018. It's a few million dollars. Right? That, that makes a difference to the, the big brothers and big sisters, the American Heart Association or the Susan G. Komen or the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership, much less all the different charities that everybody else support. We move that needle. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think all of us can be proud of. Because right. if we're investing in the American Heart Association or uh, into young men and women through big brothers and big sisters, as far as I'm concerned, the return on investment for those charitable donations is infinite. Mm-hmm. We affect lives. Right. We, we, we save lives with the American Heart Association. We change lives with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and we're making a difference. Right. All right, Chris. Hey, let's play, uh, let's play this or that. Okay. So, no, you just got back from the mountains, and you do a lot of traveling around the world. What, what is your dream vacation? Beaches, a beach or, or mountains? Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw this up out of the gate. I, I apologize up front. <laughs> So I'm less concerned about geography. I'm more concerned about friendships. Mm. So I'm more interested. I don't care where we go. And you know this about me. I don't care where we go as long as we're with friends. Right. So I just came back from skiing with two of my fantastic friends. 
this week, uh, I'm bouncing out on Friday to New York City. I'm going to spend uh, the weekend with a bunch of my high school friends. We col- collectively call ourselves the Deplorables. Long story on that one. <laughs> so I'm going to be hanging out with the Deplorables this weekend. <laughs> oh so it's, it's less about uh, where we go, and it's more about who we go with. Who we go with. That's awesome. That's great. Good, good. Very good answer. Do you talk on the? F- I know you call me, so you're you're a caller instead of a text messenger. Are you, are you- oh, I'm such a phone guy. Yeah, right. So so I'll take phone over email, over text messaging, over yeah. Instagram or social media, uh, which of course drives my 17 year old nuts because mm-hmm. the last thing she wants to do is take a phone call from me, or God forbid, I FaceTime her. Holy cow! She she she'll go dark on me for a week over that. So I prefer the phone because it provides the greatest context for me to communicate. Okay, okay. Well, I've, and I've got some uh, bishop. I've got some tickets. I've got some Maverick tickets, and we need to. <laughs> I've only got a few more left, but uh, That's maybe great. we can. Holy work! Because I know you're a big Dirk and the Whiskey fan. Uh, uh, bishop is a huge Dirk Nowinski fan. I, I I yeah. We'll just leave it at that. All right. Good. 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 <clears throat> All right. What about pancakes or waffles? Are you a pancake or a waffle guy? So uh, the original uh, conversation I had with Bill Case, my predecessor at Tiger 21, occurred at the original Pancake House. Uh, and uh, I think I told you the story. When he and I first sat down, he said, Chris, would you be interested in uh, taking my fill my shoes, running this Tiger 21 group? And the original thought that I had is, nah, that doesn't sound that interesting. Uh, until we talked about what that meant and how, as I mentioned earlier, we could move these people's needles outside of just uh, the almighty dollar. That to me was fascinating. So I'll I'll lean in on pancakes. All right, good, good, good. Pancakes. Are you a jacket or a sweater guy? No, definitely jacket guy. Definitely a jacket guy. <clears throat> you like vests as well. I know you. I do like vests every once in a while, especially yeah. as you get older, Jay, and you, and your body start to shy, the size starts to change. <laughs> you can wear a vest, and I can cover up some stuff. Just put it out there. <laughs> I know, I know. It, the older we get, uh, any particular books that you've read in the past? I know you mentioned that. Earlier halftime. Yep. Is there any other books that you can think of? So there are a few books that have really changed the way people think within our community, specifically the Tiger 21 community. Um, When I first read Jewel's autobiography, Never Broken, it is brilliantly done. And how she both taught herself and unlearned bad behaviors, and she kind of maps that out for us. That's a great story, too. It's a phenomenal story. Um, you are good friends. Oh, uh, we're we're uh, we are good friends, and yeah. I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the woman. She is a phenomenal. She's a wonderful performer. She's a great artist, but she is a she is a deep and caring soul. Yeah. Uh, another book that was written by the son of one of the other Tiger Twenty One chairs, a guy who runs Houston. Um, Scott Gortno wrote the book, The Story We Tell Ourselves. Mm. Uh, and you know, in the context of us talking about relationships in Tiger 21, it's all over the map, right? Super good, super not good. Uh, for folks that are struggling in relationships, Scott's book, The Story We Tell, The Stories We Tell Ourselves, is fantastic, fantastic. Because in the, in the world of high ego, uh, you know, testosterone, type A individuals, it's always everybody else's fault. But the truth is, more often than not, it's our fault. And the gift of it being our fault is we can control ourselves. We can't control each other, but we mm-hmm. can control ourselves. And if we can realize how we're responsible, how we're accountable, how, how we are um, creating a lot of the stories and the drama and sometimes the demons that we create, <laughs> if we can get a hand on that and we can start addressing that, it's amazing how things generally tend to get better, especially in the relationships with our families. Right, right. I know in our church service, we in uh, Watermark, we have a, a group. You have five or six groups that are couples that are in groups. And, and uh, JP said this in the in – the, he's now in uh, Waco at uh, – the church down there, but he mentioned this on his uh, podcast last week. He said, you know, he said, when we got together, my first community group, he said, I looked around and I said, I'm the only normal one here. You know, there's no, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the only normal yeah. one. And that's what a lot of people do think. Of and course. then all of a sudden, everybody, of course, if everybody thinks that, then wow. So uh, I think that's a good, that's a good, so that Scott Gorto is a great guy, you know, and he wrote a great book and uh, that's a, that's a really good thing. I have another book. If I can, can I get one more? Yeah, absolutely. 
So uh, this is the Chris Ryan show right a, now, yeah. man. This is there is a book that's called Your Money or Your Life, mm. and it talks about how much time, energy, and effort you need to be focusing on building up your wealth versus everything else. Because again, getting back to the the uh, individuals and organization that have spent their entire life building wealth and creating their empires. That's great and wonderful, but that doesn't necessarily provide for that um, uh, significance that we talked about earlier. And at some point in time, we all have to make that switch in moving from success to significance. Bob Buford's halftime. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we need to redefine how we want to spend our time and energy and efforts against what are truly the most important things in our life. Right. And um, your money or your life helps you quantify that and then offer suggestions as to how to focus on building up your life and not necessarily focusing solely, as so many of us do, on building up our wealth. Right, right. It's about what, what is your success? What does success mean to you? What does that look like? And, and that's about, is it, it's not about money. It's about you know success and freedom and the things we talked about earlier. So, so to answer the question, what does significance look like to me? If I could, um, if I could contribute into a world where the people I care about better themselves, uh, where my family and my daughter in particular um, are happy and joyful, have good health, are uh, educated, and have the ability to realize their dreams. If I can put my head down at night and feel like I've moved the needle in the lives of others, man, that's 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 what I ask for. Mm-hmm. Maybe sometimes it's more than I deserve, but I feel very blessed in knowing that more times than not, that's the way I tend to go to bed at night. Right, right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and is there any famous quotes? So there's a there's a Calvin Coolidge quote that I picked up, and I'll I'll screw it up twenty ways till Sunday. Uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, all about perseverance. And it goes something, and I'm sure you've heard it. It's, you know, nothing takes the, the place of perseverance. Talent will not, genius will not, you know, uh, hard work and determination are omnipotent. So I believe that, you know, it's funny, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Mm-hmm. And I make it a point in, you know, I get up early in the morning, I go to bed relatively early at night, and I try to do as much as I can each and every day. And uh, as I said earlier, it, it allows me to sleep well and, and hopefully move the needle in some folks' lives. There you go. That's what uh, Todd Wagner said this Sunday on in um, at church. He was talking about, you know, if, if at the end of this life, if we sit and if we die, and when we die, we're all going to die, but let's say 30, 100 years from now, whatever. But and, and if you do it, and all of a sudden, if somebody comes to your to bishop or your wife at the time or your significant people and they say hey did chris love you and if there's any ounce of i don't know that's tragedy to me i mean if my kids don't know that i love them and they don't know them every day man i need to do that and that's more important that's what chris ryan's talking about i mean chris is talking about you know bishop and loving bishop and giving back to her her being the best person you know, and and going to college and doing those things and achieving those and achieving those goals that that's out for her. You know, you just uh, had me think of something. So, man, I mean, you can sit here forever. So, I, I love Chris Ryan. So, what a think great guy. about the meeting that we had in December. <clears throat> think about the person uh, who spoke, who opened by reading his own obituary. Oh yeah. And one of the exercises we can say we, Marvin Blumstein. Uh, well, Marvin loved to have a little shout out. Marvin Blum 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 and Associates <laughs> in uh, Fort Worth, one of the best. Well, the only estate planners in the country, the one of the best. He's on the board of Tiger 21, and Marvin's got a great son, Adam, got a great family. And um, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm kind of taking this. So the, so the beauty of that whole experience was that Marvin uh, read his obituary to the room, and I think everyone in the room was completely blown away. So how cool would it be if, to your listeners, um, uh, they have the uh, opportunity and the challenge of writing their own obituary because you know I know that if I wrote my obituary today there would be things that I would want to strive more towards in terms of how I show up with my daughter or with my friends or, or professional whatever the case may be mm-hmm. and what a great exercise to write that down and use it as almost a goal or a vision of how I want to best be remembered 
and then make sure that day in and day out, I'm living my life to the best ability to accomplish that. Absolutely. I mean, we we only live once, right? I mean, it, this is a it's a start and a finish. And I talk about the dash, and even Marvin mentioned December at that meeting. You know, that there Jay Young talks about the dash. You know, about you know, I was born in 1963, and at the end, there's going to be another date. Hopefully, it's in 30, 40, 50 years. You know, and I can I can accomplish some more things in this life, but you never know. And so, you want to do the best you can while you're here. And that's that's exactly what I mean. Marvin did in his portfolio defense. He started off with that and just said, "This was Marvin Blum. Loved his family, and I had to follow him. I do my portfolio defense in January, and it's one of the hardest ones to follow. It's like you know, me following Chris Ryan on on some of the, his stories. I mean, he's got such great stories. And then they go, Jay, what do you think? And I go, Man, I can't come close to that, Chris. But but I have to follow kind. Marvin Blum, and with Marvin. You know, he talks about his portfolio defense. He got how many photos did he have of his family? Yeah, probably about a hundred. Oh my gosh! I mean, I had like 10, 15. I mean, you know, and I mean, not that I don't have more photos, but you know, he just overwhelms. Sure. You know. Sure. All Big. good stuff. This has been a blast. Thank you Man. so much for having me. Absolutely, Chris. I'm so glad you came in, and and I look forward to our next meeting, which will be soon, and uh, we always catch up. So thank you very much for coming in, and and I appreciate you. Thanks, brother. Absolutely, love you.